Greetings, everybody. It's your boy, Sonny Nesperance. Welcome to episode 33 of the I Thrive podcast. And man, man, the recent podcast, I interviewed someone who had a few abortions, who uh, uh, not one, not two, but five abortions and one miscarriage. Um, today, I got for you uh, a special woman who survived an abortion. Now, you're probably thinking, survived an abortion? Look, I never even thought they existed. I never knew babies could survive uh, abortions. I thought when it was done, that was that. But no, um, you have Miss Jennifer here, as well There's you know, quite many who have survived an abortion. You actually even, they're starting to build a, a community to really help, you know, um, speak out, you know, against it. And so this is a very... I'll be very honest with you guys. I didn't. I, I didn't just wake up one day and said, "Hey, let me look for an abortion survivor." Um, it really, it's. I came across um, Jennifer's profile on uh, on Facebook because I know you. You know the younger generation. Facebook's like whatever for y'all now. But um, and uh, when <laughs> when I seen abortion survivor, I, I was really confused. And you know this episode, it, it it's it's very. Uh, uh, an, an important one for me. It's a, it's a very big one for myself because really I, within this podcast, you know, I want to touch on several topics and, you know, surviving an abortion. It's not an uh, easy thing to talk about. It's not um, an easy thing to even think about. Like you have to, you know, you kind of go on with your day thinking or knowing somebody tried to kill you, you know, and it's, it's, you know, people survive it for a reason, you know, so I'm grateful that God, um, allow Jennifer to, um, to live. And now she's able to share her story healthily because some people that have survived abortions, you can tell like their face is deformed They're, you know, so the way y'all see Jennifer right now, uh, um, this is not how all of them come out. A lot of them, there's a several mental, uh, um, issues like disabilities that comes along with it. But man, I'm just truly grateful that, um, I'm able to, um, hear her story out and where she can share it out, you know, starting from the, you know, beginning and, 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 you know, kind of how she goes on with life. So, uh, uh without further ado, before I begin, uh, as you know, this, uh, podcast sponsored by Je veux jouer. Je veux jouer is a program that is niched for youth, uh, with a variety of activities that teach life skills through those activities. There's financial literacy activities, behavioral mentorship, student athlete uh, uh, programs, and so forth. Also, there are tutoring services that are offered French, English, and math. Uh, um, and it's done via Zoom as well. So if those of you are located in different countries, the States or England, uh, uh, Africa, you know, uh, uh, Europe, whatever the case may be, um, mm -hmm. feel free to tag along those services. Also, this podcast affiliates itself with only one church, and that's First Church of our Lord Jesus Christ with a leader, teacher, and guide is Apostle Pastor Gino Jennings. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, hear uh, uh, the pastor, you can go on uh, YouTube, just type his name, or you could also go on the truthofgod.com to see if there's a temple near you. And um, if you want to, if you're requesting for baptism, you can go on the truthofgod.com and fill out uh, a baptism, uh, uh, baptismal request form. All right. So uh, we're about to begin. Uh, uh, without further ado, uh, um, Mrs. Jennifer, go, go ahead and just please state, you know, uh, on who you are and, 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 and yeah. Yeah. Um, hi, my name is Jennifer Milborn. I'm 42 years old and I did survive an abortion. Um, before I share my story, I heard you Sundin, talk about a woman who survived or had five abortions. Is that right? Yes. Yes. I would love to speak to her directly at this moment. I hope um, you have a chance to watch this. And I want you to know that we survivors are not pitted against women who have abortions. Um, our purpose in sharing our stories is to bring awareness to what abortion really is and to show love to all of those who have fallen victim to the lie that abortion is healthcare. So I want to tell you that we forgive you and we appreciate you coming forward and sharing your story very much. And I want to honor you for sharing. No, for sure. I'll definitely uh, um, reach out to her. I know she would love 
to definitely talk to you. She she really, you know, she explained it. Uh, uh, um, she was, you know, young and it happens. It was pressure she was dealing with as well. She was about to go to college, you know, and she realized that those are like excuses she was making at the time. But, you know, because people, you know, they see abortion and it's, they think it's, you just want to go buy a, a pack of water bottles at the grocery stores and it just doesn't bother you. Right. right. Uh, an abortion, there's so much you have to deal with afterwards, you know, mentally. And, and it's like now that when she realizes it, it's it, she 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 really wants to help, you know, uh, um, people out there. And, you know, those who want to have one, I believe she's like a post abortion coach now, too, for people, you know, women who've had one or want to. She's uh, mm-hmm. uh, um, using herself to speak to them, to, you know, kind of turn them away. Some are turning it away and some, you know, are, are doing it. But this is such a serious topic, you know, and I didn't even know how, how, you know, crazy it was. Like there's a, a community of it and there's some that are, that are silent. Not all want to come out and, you know, speak about it because not all can. And a lot of them, they're having trouble even just, you know, seek, getting forgiveness. They are really trying to believe, man, does God forgive me? Can I go on? And like, because they did not know what they were doing at a time. Uh, and Jen, so by saying that, man, I, I just, Really, I appreciate you for saying it because anyone in your position would go on, hey, I hate you and this and that, forget you. I want to talk to her and tell her how much she's a killer. And, you know, it's it's it gets to that point. And it's very tough mm-hmm. to, you know, have that conversation. So who knows? Maybe it could be a dialogue within the podcast or if it's something one v one personal, that's no problem. I will definitely, definitely get in touch with her. I'm, I, I know she'll be glad yeah. to, to talk Thank about it. Thank you so much. No, no worries. And, you know, when I was praying about whether to do this interview or not, one thing that you said when we first spoke was how um, like incredible this entire subject of surviving an abortion was to you, because I really identified with that when, because I found out when I was 19 years old and it was funny, I was out shopping with my mom in the big city. I live in the mountains and um we were shopping and I asked her to tell me something I never knew about myself. And, you know, every kid wants to hear, you know, funny little things we did when we were younger or things they don't remember. And she actually proceeded to tell me that I had uh, survived my biological mother's abortion. And my biological mom is my adoptive mom's sister. And back, yeah, so I stayed within the family, which I'm very grateful for. Mm -hmm. And I was born in 78 and conceived in 78. Mm -hmm. And about April in the springtime, my biological mom showed up at my adoptive mom's house and asked her to take her to an abortion clinic. And throughout the ride, my adoptive mom begged her, let's not do this. I'll just adopt her. Let me have her. And uh, my biological mom thought that would be too difficult, which is understandable. And so she went in for the procedure and they discovered, um, so it was a vacuum aspiration procedure, which is literally how it sounds. It's a, it's a tiny tube and it's inserted into the embryonic sac and it literally sucks the baby out. Um, they discovered that my head was too big for the procedure. Mm -hmm. So at this clinic, they quit the procedure and they told her that the the baby's head was too large and they would have to quit it for now. And that more than likely she'd miscarry me due to the embryonic sac being torn. My biological mother was also an alcoholic. She dealt with a lot. So she proceeded to live life the the only way she really knew how. Mm And lo and behold, I was born over eight pounds, uh, you know, five months later, and I was adopted by my, um, my aunt who became my adoptive mom. I try to keep all my words, you know, correct. So everyone can understand my story. It gets confusing for sure. And so I grew up adopted and that was actually in itself something I struggled with because just knowing that the person who you were essentially given to. And as Christians, we know God gives us life, right? And he chooses our parents and gives our lives to them as a gift. And knowing that I was unwanted, I really struggled with that. And growing up, I didn't talk about being adopted. And 
that's all that I knew of my story until I was 19 years old shopping with my mom. And at that moment, she told me that I miraculously survived this abortion. And so I was 19. I was a student at um, a great college on the West Coast. And I looked out the window of the truck we were sitting in while she told me about this. And I started flipping out. I started crying and I, my heart and my brain did not know how to comprehend yeah, yeah. what I was being told mm -hmm. and what I, what little I knew of adoption back then wasn't very much. And it was such a weird concept to survive an abortion. And my, my mother seeing how I was reacting said, no, no, just, let's just drop it. Let's just bury this. Don't worry about it. Don't cry. I don't want you to cry anymore. You're here, here, you're saved. It's okay. And I was a good girl and I loved my mother. I appreciated her always for wanting me. So I told her, okay. And literally wiped the tears off my face. I built my little emotional wall and hid it for years. And I really didn't begin to deal with it till I was in my thirties. Wow. So you didn't, you, you were told that you were adopted at an early age. Correct. I always knew that my biological mom was my birth mom, but she had become my fun aunt. Like Ooh. when I was little, she'd buy me candies and treats. And then in high school, before I knew the Lord, it was alcohol and, you know, cigarettes and anything my group of friends would want. Okay. 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 And then now you're 19 and then boom, she just tells you like that. And do you think if you never asked that question, you think like they would have never told you? I don't think so. Because um, at the time, from what I gather, after I spoke with my dad uh, years later, after both my Your biological dad, uh, my adoptive dad, adopted dad. Okay, okay. Yeah, my biological dad, I don't know. And I don't have a relationship with him. I made that choice to not seek him out. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I talked with my adoptive dad years later in my thirties and actually after my adoptive mom had passed away and I asked him, did you know about this? And he didn't know. And wow. they had had marital problems and were divorced actually kind of crazy. They were divorced from my freshman year to my senior year. So a lot of like what I was going through during that time, there wasn't a lot of communication because I lived with my adoptive mom. Mm -hmm. So no one else in the family really knew about this. It had stayed between both my moms, if you will. Wow, that is. And how long was your adoptive mother, your aunt, and her husband together for? Uh, they were actually never together. I believe they, I was conceived around New Year's mm -hmm. and they met somewhere. They maintained a friendship for a while and she ended up telling him, you know, I think I'm going to have this baby because no nothing's happening. It was like a few months later and he made the choice to not be a part. And she was fine with that and decided to allow my adoptive mom to adopt me. Mm -hmm. so, so, she so gave I, mean, me I mean, when the yeah. question I'm talking about the, your adoptive mother's husband at the time, how long, were they, how long were they together until he found out that you were an abortion survivor? Oh, um, he didn't find out until after my mom died. So she told him while she was like on her deathbed? He never told him. Oh, you told him? I told him. Wow. Yeah. So that means I, if you found out at 19. I didn't tell anyone. I, I kept it to myself. Um, I got married when I was uh, 21 okay. and I didn't tell my husband for several years. I, I was still trying to be an obedient daughter yeah. and pretend it wasn't there. Right. And so I kept trying to live life. We, we have three beautiful kids mm -hmm. and I just kept putting that sunshine smile on my face because it, it's such a weird concept surviving an abortion. I mean, now, two years later that I've learned all I have and joined ASN, I, I understand it more. I can relate to it. I can grasp the concept of surviving one. Yeah. 
because I, before I didn't really know what abortion was. I think I even fell for the lie that it was just a clump of tissues. I'll I'll be honest. I hadn't really thought of it and it had never occurred to me to go online and Google survivors of abortions. I, I honestly thought it was a freak thing that happened to me and I didn't want anyone to ever know about it. Wow. That's, that's just, wow. So your aunt pretty much (laughs) died with that, uh, or your biological mother. Not biological, but your adoptive mother pretty much died with that, um, you know, secret from, you know, your adoptive father. How how did he feel when you told him? Like, how, like, was he shocked? Was he, like, how? how... Um, So to be sure that I'm making myself clear, my adoptive dad was with my adoptive mom. So they were married. So my biological mom was never in a relationship with my adoptive dad. So he, when I spoke with him and said, this is what mom told me when I was on break from college, Mm -hmm. he wasn't surprised. He said that um, my biological mom had kind of lived a very free spirit life. And there was the possibility of like hints of multiple abortions. Mm -hmm. And it was never really, I know, it was never really talked about. I have a half sibling who's uh, quite a bit older than me. Mm -hmm. And uh, we unfortunately were not uh, in communication very often anymore. We were raised very differently. And there was the talk though, that there was multiple abortions between the two of us. And I think with that information, I not only had to wrestle with surviving one Mm -hmm. and someone not wanting me and someone giving me up for adoption, but having possible siblings whose lives were cut short, why on earth did I survive? Yeah. Why was I given that gift of life? Yeah, that is just wow. This is ah, that that that's that's really that's like a very uh, overwhelming thing to know. And I mean, it's like mm-hmm. let's just say you know at the age you know you're at now or I'm at now, just the fact that if somebody were to tell me there was somebody's looking to kill you, it's like who you know you know. And you just weren't born and people don't see it that way. They yeah. think it's really, there's nothing in there. And it's just something pity paka that's being done. And it's like, of course, something like, like me, let alone, let's say, okay, random person out there want to kill me. That's a whole different story. But my own right. mother and then my own dad, like even, even me right now today, that would mess yeah. me up. That would be, you know, I'll still, you know, cling on to God and everything, but that's going to be over here for a good while, right. you know, and you had to, the yeah. way you found out was like, you had to ask, like, tell me something I don't know. You know, yeah. I'm glad, you know, your aunt did tell you cause some women wouldn't say nothing. And now that mm-hmm. she died, the fact that, uh, your, ado- uh, your adoptive dad did not even know himself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, is your, is your biological mom still alive? No, she passed away from cancer a year after her sister, my adoptive mom did. So you, you probably would have, if your aunt never told you, you probably would have never, ever, would have ever known, known this. And it's, it's really interesting because it's definitely a trauma, but besides it being a trauma, it's almost like there's this spiritual thing kind of attached to you mm-hmm. because I wrestled so much with not being wanted. And I always attributed that to being adopted. But once I found out that information, and I I took probably about 12 to 15 years or so before I even began to deal with uh, surviving the abortion, because you don't know how it affects you, right? Until you come to terms and go, wow, I'm not the person who I want to be. I I need to figure some stuff out. I I need to see what's going on because you just, you just don't know. But a perspective um, that really helped me out Uh, So I was around, I think, 35 when I realized that my marriage wasn't where it needed to be, where even being a mother, there were just certain things that I felt I could do better Mm -hmm. and I wasn't. And so I took some self-reflection and it just kept coming back to that trauma of the surviving the abortion. And I thought, okay, I need to do something about this. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I still never Googled it. I still didn't reach out. It didn't even, 
Please. it didn't even cross my mind because I still thought I was the only one and I didn't want people to know. Yeah. So I ended up going to a women's prayer meeting at my church mm -hmm. and we had, I believe like finished a book or a, a study or teaching mm -hmm. and we were sharing, you know, some pretty deep stuff about what we women had gone through. Mm -hmm. And my pastor, uh, Pastor Celine, had shared how she was adopted. And I thought to myself, wow, you know, I'm adopted too. Maybe I could get the courage to speak up and at least share that with this prayer group of women who I very much trusted. And I knew who loved me as a young woman. Maybe I could get the courage to finally say something about being adopted. Mm -hmm. So I did. And I tell you what, it came out that I survived an abortion and I did not mean to go there. It definitely had to have been a God moment where it was like the Lord just kind of pushed something out of me. Like it just needed to get out. And I said it and I was so horrified and the room was, I mean, it's an awkward thing to say yeah. and it's probably an awkward thing to hear as yeah. well. And the room became very quiet and I just start crying. I put my face in my hands and my uh, pastor Celine came over to me and just held me and I just cried and cried. And uh, I received a lot of support from everyone. And I'm so thankful that the first time I said it out loud, you know, was with a group of women that I, that I love, you know, from my church. So uh, uh, I think a couple of years later, um, one of my friends that was there at that prayer meeting came up to me and she works with our local pregnancy center. And she said that she had talked with their director and asked if, um, like, they asked her, would she be willing to come speak at our fundraiser? So she asked me, and it was crazy because it seemed like such a natural thing to say yes to. Mm -hmm. So I said, sure. You know, I've been uh, teaching in the junior church. I've been a youth leader. I've been in front of groups of people. And I was essentially fine speaking. And a few hours later, I was home and I went, what did I do? I can't speak about this. This is, this is me. This is so personal. And I don't want people to know that, you know, my, my mom didn't want me, you know, essentially there's, there's that fear. You don't want people to know that you're unwanted. Mm -hmm. And, but I, I, I was determined to do it. And I did an interview with them for their newsletter. And that was a beginning for me. And that went out all over the County. And I felt, okay, this is okay. For some reason, people want to hear about this. And I wrote up my story and my church, God bless them, bought two tables at the fundraiser. So I had plenty of church family there to support me. And I shared my story. And um, that moment in the room when um, I was done sharing, people began to applaud. And it for me, the healing really began at that moment because I realized that I was accepted. I had laid out some heavy stuff out there and had done my absolute best to honor everyone involved because my sharing my story is not to dishonor my biological mom. In fact, I fully and completely forgive her and I love her. And so at that moment, I was accepted and I went back to my table and uh, one of my pastors hugged me and I knew it was going to be all right. And I essentially began to deal with the emotions and started opening up to my husband. And we ended up telling the children and I, I just needed to talk it out and accept that this happened to me. And in my walk with the Lord, I believe we, he brings us through processes, right. To make us better to make us more like him, essentially. He's so good and wonderful and perfect, right? And not that we necessarily are gonna become as perfect and amazing as him, but there's that part where we wanna be like our dad. And I felt like he was fixing these heart issues within me, that I wanted to be a good wife and a good mom and a good friend. And then this part of me began to open up to wanna to help people who have been through trauma. And not just limited to abortion survivors, but to, you know, sexual trauma, just, just everything, crimes, um, anyone who's been traumatized, like we are not supposed to live that way. We are, we are not supposed to be victims, downcast, feeling 
terrible. And I wanted to start to bring hope. And I, a couple years later, I had another friend say that they uh, met Melissa Odin down in the Valley. She, she spoke and shared about her book and she is an abortion survivor. In fact, she's been traveling around for about 10 years. Uh, she goes before Congress. She, she's, oh, she's amazing. And so I finally contacted her and went, wow, there's, there's another one. There's another survivor. And the first survivor I spoke with actually was Claire Colwell. And we talked on the phone and she got my raw emotion. Uh, thankfully now I can interview and share everything. I'm more healed. Yeah. And um, that was really the beginning for me of sharing everything. Oh, wow. And one thing I wanted to, you know, go back on, you know, for people to know it's when you said you forgave um, your biological mother, like, did you, did you, were you able to like, talk to her and say, Hey, I know that you tried to abort me. Did you have that conversation with her? No. In mm -hmm. fact, after my adoptive mom, because remember my, my, both my moms were sisters. Yeah. Uh, after my adoptive mom passed away, which actually was from cancer as well. She, I took that time to go visit my biological mom mm -hmm. and I hadn't seen her, I believe in about 10 years at that point. And she was still an alcoholic and was pretty sick. And she wouldn't look me in the eyes at all. I was with her for maybe about an hour. And I just sat next to her rocking chair. And I literally, I just held her hand because I knew that I was representing Jesus to her at that moment. And she had lost her sister and she was drinking heavily. And here I come in to say hi. I'm sure that was a lot for her to deal with. And at this point, I knew that about, you know, about the abortion, of course, and she knew, but we never spoke about it. I felt that she was too sick mm -hmm. to be able to really have that conversation. Yeah. So at that moment, I decided to let it go. I decided to forgive her. Uh, when I did a lot of research on you know, the seven D's and abortions, because I, I wanted to find out more about the abortion I survived. You know, it really gave me an understanding for what women of the seven D's were told. Mm -hmm. I mean, she really was told it was health care. You know, we, when, we mean have healthcare, problems. Like it was like, it was a good thing to do. Yeah. It, 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 it was like the thing to do when you get pregnant. Oops. You have a one night stand, whatever happens. And you just can't bring up a baby. I mean, there's such a justification that, well, I don't want to, for, for my biological mom, she didn't want to screw up another child mm -hmm. is what I was told by another family member. Yeah. And that, and there was nothing wrong with the child she had raised. She just felt she had it done the best she could. Mm -hmm. So in her mind, she was saving essentially me mm -hmm. by not putting me through a childhood that you know, might not raise me the best way possible. And as I was researching, I realized that these women were really essentially being told a lie that abortion was good. Abortion was a good thing and it was going to fix their problems. So she thought she was doing me a favor. And at that point, I, as I'm holding her hand and I'm looking at her, I realized that I needed to forgive her. You know, that, that, that was the society back then. It was almost a fashionable thing to do. Everyone was doing it. And I, I, I let that go. And that's really big, like was the beginning of me being able to forgive her, forgive myself to, I had a lot of thoughts that had been in my head forever that I was unwanted. I wasn't good enough. I used to think all of these terrible things on a regular basis daily. I mean, how was, how is that affecting those that I love? Mm -hmm. So I began to let it all go. And I would practice saying, I forgive her. I forgive her until I knew, and I could say it with a smile and say, I love her. And I 100% forgive her. And that was the point that I knew that, especially after she passed away, because I wouldn't want to be sharing the story and having it hurt her. That's not my heart at all. And my heart's to protect my family because this, this has been a family secret for a long time and it's awkward and it's weird and it 
like, like your podcast, you bring up these topics to get people thinking yeah. we, we can't shy away from some of these difficult realities. Mm -hmm. Abortion is not a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that's why I wanted to go back on when you say you forgive your mother, cause you know, those watching forgiveness is not a easy and simple thing at all. Sure, for you, you think, okay, someone spilled my uh, water. Uh, somebody uh, accidentally bumped into me. Oh, sorry, sorry. for You know, you can't narrow it down to that. There's things that people go through in terms of, you know, Jennifer, I mean, that's, that's not an easy thing to deal with. And on top of it, you find out 19 years later, because you asked, it's not an easy thing at all. And, and something like that, you know, it, 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 you know, as I say, it only takes, you know, God to be able to allow someone to get that done because today people will say, no, I don't, I don't forgive them. Mm -mm. And they've been through it. I get you've been through it all. I can't forgive them. I can't. And when you can't, you know, you, you let that person have something over you. And now it's to the point where you may have done, everybody's probably done something to somebody where they needed that forgiveness too, you yeah. know? And so now it's like, and for it, look, what may be small to you may be big for someone, right? Let's just right. say somebody was like a, a loves to draw. Let's say you're, you're one of your kids, they draw very good drawing. And to you, man, what is this? Let me just throw it in the garbage. To you, it's probably just nothing. To them, it's like, mm -hmm. mom, how much going on? This is, it was huge. You get what I mean? So, and it, it's very, that's why I'm, I'm grateful and glad, you know, that uh, you were able to forgive uh, your mother mm -hmm. and, you know, cause now you're hearing, you know, these different things and you have to go through a, a lot. And I mean, at this point in time, you don't even know if your biological dad is alive or, or dead. You have no clue where he is. And ah, that's, that's, that's another thing as well, man. It's, it's just, and it's, 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 it's tough, you know, and I, I hope, you know, if he is alive, I, I do hope one day, you know, you're at least able to, you know, meet, do you, do you even have like a picture of him or anything? I actually do have a picture. They, uh, the two of them, when they were still dating, uh, did a, or kind of dating, I don't know what it is, friends. Um, one of those old fashioned type of pictures from the 1800s. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Go and you get dressed up. Yeah. That's the only picture I have of him. But I do want to say, because I am adopted, I'm, for me personally, blood isn't thicker than water. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that could never, be for me and that was something I struggled with because being in a small town you know there's a lot of tight families up mm -hmm. here and they were like oh blood is thicker than water and you know we're we're family we're this and I really didn't understand that concept but I it was funny um a couple of years ago well actually about for the total of about 15 years I prayed for like parents to come into my life parents that would love me, that would want me. And I didn't know what that looked like. And about three years ago, uh, there's this couple at my church who I've always admired and adored. They're in their sixties and uh, their names are Mike and Gloria Flores. They're absolutely adorable. And I, they had been on my heart for about six months and I thought, well, it's awkward, but I'm just gonna ask them if they'll be like my spiritual parents. If, mm -hmm. if I, you know, I, I need some parents. I, mm -hmm. I'm parents, to, you know, I'm a parent to my kids. You know, I want mm -hmm. that covering. And I asked them and I said, you don't have to do it. It's okay if you say no, I don't wanna push you. Mm -hmm. And they very enthusiastically said yes. And over these last three years, it has brought such a healing to my heart and I, I have a, I have a dad mm -hmm. who loves me and wraps his big, strong arms around me and gives me hugs and asks how I'm doing and how the kids are. Mm -hmm. it, it's such a simple thing. And so many people, you know, have this their entire lives. And my, my heart has been broken for those whose fathers have left the home, mm -hmm. you know, the, the place for fathers to be in the home is it's very much needed oh, yes. and I was so thankful that there was a man willing to you know to love me mm -hmm. and to take my hand and say it was going to be okay we've had um we've kind of been in this season like everyone we're all in this COVID thing happening yeah. and there's just a lot I think we're all in process mm -hmm. like God is doing something I I believe he's shaking the church up and family is needed right 
whether that's blood family, if you're blessed with that, but there's also family within the church as well, family within the community of the groups that you belong to. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very thankful that they've kind of stepped up to be there for me and to help me and teach me what it's like to have parents that are, you know, especially now that I'm an adult, you know, a hundred percent for you. Mm -hmm. And they've been such great supporters of my sharing my story and everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. This is just a very wonderful, you know, and you know, powerful story within this because, um, you know, I don't, I don't know how the schools are over there, but I know for sure abortion, like my high school that I went to, there was never, ever any like classes or any conversation about it. Um, I, um, I mean, you, you hear it. But you don't, you know, because you know what, you're a high school student. You're not thinking of the seriousness of it. You're worried about the next uh, shoes or uh, PlayStation, whatever came out. Oh, you talk right. about PlayStation. Oh, my days, now that's coming out, you know. But then when you hear abortion, you kind of like, man, yeah, abortion, you know, okay. It, you know, it's not something days. And I think uh, uh, it, it should be, there should be topics where they just explain information, you know, especially for girls, because I guarantee you, there's probably so many that, done it because they just can't come out you know there's some that just can't come out uh, um they, they like because it's going to be like a big whoa you did that and that's fine if you know you keep it to you you, know, you repent you do what you have to do and um you know i'm not saying those are all forced to come out because not everybody can not everybody is willing especially for yourself not everyone's willing to say hey I'm, I'm, I'm actually an abortion survivor you know and i'm because the fact that there's more than one of you that's out there it's it's crazy and i believe claire um because hopefully i'll be able to you know have her on the podcast as well eventually but i believe she, she was twins it was a twin it was twins she survived and the twin did it correct yeah it was it was tw it was two twins the twin didn't survive but she did so it's it's like a lot of times that's why i tell people you really don't know what people go through because seeing you right now i guarantee you people see it oh man this girl is very vivian can't tell she's been through something you, you, you mean, look she's so happy and look at her head <laughs> you know but then when, yeah. you know, you see someone like that and say, oh, shoot, she's really because I think people think you need to look like you're going through something to go right. through something, you know, but that's, that's not the case. That's not yeah. always the case, you know, and so um, I'm, I'm really grateful um, that you you were able to, you know, establish that peace, you know, because something, uh, uh, um, you know, my leader always says is that spirit is thicker than blood. And a lot of the times when you go into, you know, uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, God and you're going into certain teachings, it's tough mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, you know, uh, uh, keep that same group that you're used to being around you. you know what I mean? And right. then for yourself, in terms of you getting that understanding where, man, you, you need that support. Because that's another thing, too. A lot of people, it's, oh, I'm going to go through this by myself. I'm, I'm going to do this. my You know, they don't, they, I don't need you. Uh, come on, I could do this all by myself. And for you to actually go out there and say, hey, um, can you, uh, my <laughs> spiritual mom, spiritual dad, can you, you know, help me? Yeah. You're not gonna get that a lot because a lot of times people just have that pride too, you know. Yeah. And it's to the point where some just don't want to, and some they just, they just, they just, they, just, they can't, you know. So yeah. that's like, man, I'm just, I'm trying to process like the way you, you know, you went through this and how you're able to, and speak because this is really like wow. I did not, uh, I, I just, it's, it's just wow for me. It's wow, you know, and. The fact that who knows, maybe your biological father is watching these things, is is is, is yeah. seeing it because that's something you know, people do something at one point, but then they realize, shoot, I should have never done that. You know, some people it takes a day, some people it takes two weeks, some people it takes a year, some people 10 years, 20 years until they realize I should have never ever done that. Right. You know, and it's 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 you know, until they get to that point, he should I mean, I feel like he should at least, you know, reach out to you. Cause as a father, as a man, you don't want to have kids and they don't even know who you are. You're not even uh, uh, taking care of them or whatever the case may be. Yeah. And I get it in terms of his situation where he may be ashamed, but I, I you know, just still to reach out, you know, I, I hopefully yeah. I'd love to, you know, him to at least reach out to you and say, look, I'm sorry. I, whatever, how he feels like, <laughs> I hope it's, you know, with regret and that, you know, he wants to apologize and whatnot yeah. but just to, you know the fact that in the 70s i know they said it started with i forgot her name something margaret 
whatever she started the planned uh, parenthood thing where yes. she really wanted to just you know she was really for it right before you know people were kind of like ashamed about it you know they didn't want to talk about it but now today oh yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm pro abortion come on now it's my body my choice what the heck well you know <laughs> what is it for? and so for yourself jennifer you are uh you're 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 a strong woman and not when i mean strong i'm not talking about benching 500 pounds now because <laughs> that's different <laughs> but really you just and really because you know you have your own children you're married and to deal with that it's 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 wow you know and i really really do hope that people can you know see you as um someone that's really just trying to get people to think and just to you know understand about people yeah. first you know you're not and just letting you those of you know um, you know, for me, you know, Jenna, from what I've seen, Jennifer is not somebody out there just to, you know, be out there and he, 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 I survived an abortion. Yeah, that's me. Cause no, she's really, she's really trying to help the woman out there, like really trying to help. And because I'm, I'm sure, you know, there's probably women who just, they probably survived it too. And they could watch this and like, man, and it'll make them wonder, it'll make them ask, why was I adopted? What was the truth? Cause I'm, I'm glad your aunt did tell you the truth though. I am glad. Cause I'm, I know a lot of women would have just said a lie or right. they would have made like a funny joke to kind of get you to, you know, Hey, Hey, tell me something I didn't know. Did you not know that you were beautiful? <laughs> Come on, you know, make right. kind of something up. So I'm glad, you know, she was able to tell you, but the fact that, you know, her husband did not know, I mean, that that's just, wow. For a secret like that to carry more over. It's um, that's not an easy thing. He, I could probably deal with as well, you know? So, but before we close out, Jen, what, what message would you have for, you know, a woman watching this or even men too? Cause men, you know, they have to go through it as well. Some mm -hmm. men, they don't want it. Some men they're forcing it and all that. What message would you have for you know, a woman who right now want to have an abortion, you know, or yeah. thinking of having an abortion or, you know, who've had one, what, what message would you have for them? What, what can you tell them? Sundin, thank you for that question. You know, I have to say first that we survivors of abortions are not hate-filled survivors. And, you know, in a sense, the world, you know, has pitted us as enemies against one another. And that's not our purpose in what we're doing at all. It really is truly to expose the lie of abortion. Mm -hmm. And I for those of you that are out there contemplating abortion or really believe that it's completely fine, I want you to know that I don't hate you and I don't have an agenda to tear you down or take away your freedom to believe what you believe, right? We live in America and which is an amazing country that gives us that freedom to choose what we wanna believe. But I, I want you to take my story and at least think just think about the other side. You know, for those of you who are Christians, God brings about life. God is not a God of death. And the opposite of death is life. And I am a speaker of life. Without my birth happening, my children wouldn't be here. And I have a 21-year-old son who's a Marine and he's deployed right now and he's serving our country. I have a daughter who's 19 who is studying criminology because she wants to help victims and she wants to bring about justice in the world. And my 17 year old son wants to be an NFL football player one day. And he's looking at several offers and, you know, these are great blessings in my life. And if I wasn't here, they wouldn't be here either. And we actually call them second generation abortion survivors. And my three kids are proud to be called that. But there's a reality here. There's a whole generation that gets skipped when one life is taken away. And I, I know it's out of sight, out of mind. And there's that part of us as women and men that when there's something so difficult, we can't wrap our brain around, we build this wall and we hide it. That's exactly what I did when I found out I was an abortion survivor. I, I couldn't deal with it. I didn't know how to comprehend it. And I believe that most people who wanna get an abortion are capable of doing the same thing. We, we, we think we can't quite go there, that there's this little tiny life. This, it's a life, 
it, it can be a life this big and that we're going to cease its existence and say, no, we speak death over you. You can't come and live. Nope. You know, nobody wants to do that. that that's not anyone's intention when they go for an abortion, but that is the reality of what's happening. So think it through. I, I'm, I'm just challenging you. There, there are abortion survivors. We're not a myth. We're not, I don't need attention. And if I wanted attention, it definitely would not be in this way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very humbling to share my story, but I know it's needed. And I believe that God saved me in the womb. Mm -hmm. I should have been aborted. I should mm -hmm. have been miscarried. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't, I'm here. And I, in fact, my head is big. I have a big head. And when I wear beanies and hats, I have to get extra large for them to fit. It's great. Yes. That, I'm, I'm so blessed with it because that's what's kept me alive and here and the birth of my children and, and all of this and to expose the lie of abortion. Yeah. So just listen to what I have to say. Think about it. Make your decision. And we're still going to love you anyways. Wonderful. Wonderful. My days, my days, my days. Miss Jennifer, mm -hmm. thank you very much for even taking the time out. Oh, thank um, you, Dean. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem. I'm really, I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, you, you have kids and everything, so it's not easy, you know, to have these times, uh, and and you know, really just to come out and share it. I'm truly appreciative of it. Um, I really hope that those of you who watched, you, you know, really understood about this message here, and that this is very serious right now you know there's some high school students y'all need to be watching this as well because some of you well, girls in high school right now are probably pregnant you know mom doesn't know what do i want to do? Do, do what should i do you know so just just look whatever it is just please just please and please don't get an abortion plain and simple there's other options available but and, and look it, it's plain and simple as well if you're not ready to tackle that life you know as i say for the men keep your pants up and for the woman just keep the legs closed is that you won't even have to deal with all of that but it can happen you may think oh it's not gonna happen to me come on now i'm always protected and this and that you know what i'm saying i'm always right. but it, it can and now when it does it gets serious and now when it gets serious you know a, 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 a life you know is is gone and then you think what was done that's it and then one day goes by oh you're good you know hey i just got one Two days ago, actually, um, uh, uh, shame free Gigi is what she called her. The one I previously interviewed, she said that um, when it you know finished, because it was the same thing the first time, the vacuum. She said when she came out, it was a room full of women crying. Just as soon as she finished it, a room full of women just crying and 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 some it hits right after, like you just finished doing it, and it's like oh my. What did I just do? What did mm -hmm. I just do? Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 not every look. This is something that could cause a woman to kill herself. This mm -hmm. is serious right here. So those of you, it's 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 not a joke. You know, having children or just you know doing all of it's not a joke. There's people who are seriously affected by this. It's one thing. Look, I could pinch you on the arm. You could say, "Ow, that feeling is gonna go away." Give it a give it some time. It's going to be gone. But like mentally, something that you find out or something that you were told, something that you go through, it sticks. It stays there. And, and, and who knows? One year, two years, I believe for yourself, 15 years, you know, and it's, it's not an easy thing to go through. So I'm glad. I'm truly grateful and appreciative for you coming out. I'll definitely, definitely uh, um, connect with uh, Shame Free Gigi. You know, maybe it could be a dialogue where you come on the podcast and, you know, go, you know, here and there, or it could be, and then you, you definitely could speak up, but I, I know she'll be glad to be able to, to speak with, you know, so um, yeah. once again, Ms. Jennifer, thank you very much for coming. I, I truly appreciate it. I hope those of you watching, you appreciate it. Um, you know, take care, everybody, you know, be safe out there, you know, and I, I really hope this podcast really helps somebody out. All right. So as that concludes, as you know, this is sponsored by Je Veux Jouer. Je Veux Jouer. You can go on the website, J-E-V-E-U-X-J-O-U-E-R.ca. You can see the link in the description of the video. Also, this podcast affiliates itself 
with uh, one church, and that's First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, with the leader, teacher, and guide is Apostle Pastor Gino Jennings. You can go and see uh, the Apostle on YouTube, or you can also go on the truthofgod.com and see if there's a temple near you. All right. Thank you very much, Jen, for coming out. I appreciate it. All of you here, take care. It's your boy, Son in Esperance, and you know, peace be unto you all. Stay blessed, and God bless. Take care. <laughs>